Hello everyone and welcome to our proactive year-end tax planning ideas for 2020 virtual workshop. Today's agenda is straightforward. We will review year-end tax planning. While doing so, we will discuss some tax planning ideas and strategies you can consider. We will also discuss some key tax proposals that are currently being discussed. We believe in educating our clients on their choices. Our goal today is to give an overview of some year-end tax planning so that when you look at your situation, you have some strong foundational information. Please remember, each taxpayer situation should be looked at individually. The good news is we are available to talk with you about the specifics of your situation. I find it is always important to review that there are five key areas of financial planning. These areas are preservation planning, retirement planning, tax planning, estate planning, and investment planning. This presentation is about tax planning. As a comprehensive wealth management firm, we try to always consider the impact of any recommendation we make on not just one, but all these areas for our clients. Other than the annual IRS inflation, inflation adjustments, calendar year 2022 has brought a lot of conversation but limited changes in tax laws that affect most individuals. Some of the tax law provisions that were passed in bills like the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 affected corporations such as the corporate minimum tax of 15% for corporations with adjusted federal income over $1 billion, while President Biden has suggested that some personal income tax and estate planning tax changes in his proposed 2022 budget and tax plans Many experts feel that it is very unlikely that any changes, if approved, will take effect earlier than next year, if at all. Let's start by quickly distinguishing the difference between tax planning and tax preparation. Tax planning is looking ahead before year end, whereas tax preparation is filling out your tax forms after year end. This workshop is about tax planning, not tax preparation. It is about hearing some proactive ideas that you can consider now to potentially reduce your taxes in the future. One of our founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin, is credited with saying, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. For 2022, there are still seven individual tax rates. They are 10, 12, 22, 24, 32, 35, and 37 percent. Under current law, this seven rate structure, which was created by the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, is scheduled to automatically phase out on January 1st, 2026. For 2022, the standard deduction amounts for those who do not itemize has slightly increased. Those amounts are $12,950 for individuals and married couples filing separately. $25,900 for married couples filing jointly and surviving spouses, and $19,400 for heads of households. So how should you view itemized deductions if you do not take the standard deduction? The old rule was primarily to try to accelerate or realize deductions and take them as soon as possible. With the higher standard deductions, the new rule is to time or carefully plan deductions. Two of the more widespread deductions that taxpayers look at if they choose to itemize and not use the standard deduction are mortgage interest and state and local taxes, also known as SALT. For mortgages taken out after October 13th of 1987 and before December 16th, 2017, Mortgage interest is fully deductible up to the first million dollars of mortgage debt. That threshold is lowered to the first $750,000 for single taxpayers and married filing jointly, or $375,000 married filing separately, on homes purchased after December 15, 2017. For those of you with mortgages, please check with your tax preparer for how much of an interest deduction you could take. The SALT or state and local tax deductions for 2022 remains limited to $10,000.
In 2022, long-term capital gains still receive a tax break. There are still three tax rates of 0, 15, and 20% for long-term capital gains, which are for assets and investments you have held for a year or more. One planning item that many taxpayers think about is tax gains and loss harvesting. Harvesting capital losses is a strategy that has a taxpayer selling assets that are at a loss to offset capital gains. This reduces or eliminates tax on current capital gains. On the surface, loss harvest harvesting produces an economic benefit equal to the tax saved. However, sometimes it could only provide a timing benefit. This is a tax deferral strategy that could be valuable. Capital losses are highly tax effective if they can be used to offset income taxed at higher rates. A key fact to remember is you can use up to $3,000, $1,500 if married filing separately, in capital loss above capital gains to offset ordinary income. Also, as a warning, you need to watch out for the wash sale rule. This rule prevents taxpayers from repurchasing the same or a substantially similar security within 30 days of selling at a loss. If you have any questions on tax loss harvesting, please call us or your tax professional. Capital gains harvesting means taking capital gains and paying taxes on the current tax year. On the surface, it might appear that taxpayers should always harvest long-term gains because of favorable rates. However, harvesting long-term gains introduces a trade-off between lower tax rates versus the loss of tax deferral. Remember, when taking a long-term gain for tax purposes, although the tax is paid at a lower rate, it is paid sooner. For those who are not fully retired yet, remember to review your year-end retirement contribution planning. Here are some 2022 con contribution plan maximums that could be applicable if you're participating in one of these plans. For some people with non-taxed IRAs, a partial or full Roth IRA conversion could be something to consider. Some benefits from Roth IRA conversions include, they could lower your overall taxable income long-term. Roth IRAs enjoy tax-free compounding. Roth IRAs have no RMDs, which come at age 72 with traditional IRAs. Roth IRAs allow tax-free withdrawals for beneficiaries. Roth IRA conversions are not for everyone, but if you would like to explore one, then please see us or your tax professional. Traditional IRA account owners have considerations to make before performing a Roth IRA conversion. These primarily include income tax consequences on the converted amount in the year of conversion, withdrawal limitations from a Roth IRA, and income limitations for future contributions to a Roth IRA. In addition, if you are required to take a required minimum distribution in the year you convert, you must do so before converting to a Roth IRA. As a result of the recently passed SECURE Act, overall family tax bracket management is a critical area for those with untaxed retirement assets to explore each year. One of your choices is always to leave everything the way it is currently. If you're in a higher marginal tax bracket than your beneficiaries, then it might make sense to let them take distributions after your death in their tax bracket rather than you in yours. However, if your beneficiaries are in a higher marginal tax bracket, then it might make sense to take distributions in your tax bracket before death, and then to convert these accounts to Roth IRAs and leave your beneficiaries an account that still must be taken out in 10 years, but it can grow tax-free. An annual step to consider is to review your marginal tax rate and your beneficiaries' marginal tax rates each year. Qualified tuition plans, also known as 529 plans, are a great way to tax efficiently plan the financial burden of paying tuition for children or grandchildren. 
Originally, earnings in a 529 plan could be withdrawn tax-free only when used for qualified higher education at colleges, university, vocational schools, or other post-secondary schools. However, the rules change, so now 529 plans can also be used to pay for tuition at an elementary or secondary public, private, or religious school up to $2,000 per year. Unlike IRAs, there are no annual contribution limits for 529 plans. Instead, there are maximum aggregate, aggregate limits, which vary by plan. Under federal law, 529 plan balances cannot exceed the expected cost of the beneficiary's qualified higher education expenses. 529 plan limits vary by state, ranging from $235,000 up to $529,000. Some states even offer a state tax credit or deduction up to a certain amount. Contributions to a 529 plan are considered completed gifts for federal tax purposes. So in 2022, up to $16,000 per donor per beneficiary qualifies for the annual gift tax exclusion. Excess contributions above $16,000 must be reported on IRS Form 709 and will count against the taxpayer's lifetime estate and gift tax exemption amount, which is currently $12.06 million. There's also an option to make a larger tax-free 529 plan contribution if the contribution is treated as if it were spread evenly over a five-year period. For example, an $80,000 lump sum contribution to a 529 plan can be applied as though it were $16,000 per year if no other gifts are made to the same beneficiary over the next five years. Grandparents sometimes use this five-year gift tax averaging as an estate planning strategy. The death of the contrib contributor prior to the end of the five-year period may result in a portion of the contribution to be included in the contributor's estate. Tax-free withdrawals may be made for qualified education expenses. Otherwise, the deferred earnings portion may be subject to taxes and a 10% penalty. If you want to explore using a, a setting or setting up a 529 plan, it can be confusing, so call and we will be happy to assist you. Let's talk about annual gifting now. You may gift up to $16,000 tax-free to each donee in 2022. This is a $1,000 increase from $15,000 in 2021. These annual exclusion gifts do not reduce your lifetime gift tax exemption. This annual exclusion gift is doubled to $32,000 per donee for gifts made by married couples. You can also help someone with medical or education expenses without incurring gift taxes. There are opportunities to give unlimited tax-free gifts when you pay the provider of the services directly. The medical expenses must meet the definition of deductible medical expenses. Qualified education expenses are tuition, books, fees, and related expenses, but not room and board. You can find the detailed qualifications in IRS Publications 950 and the instructions for IRS Form 709 at www.irs.gov. A wealth transfer planning item to think about is the exemption amounts for gift, estate, and generation skipping taxes for 2022. It's $20.06 million, $24.12 million for married couples. Any amount over that is subject to 40% federal taxes. This high amount provides high net worth individuals a significant planning window to make gifts and set up irrevocable trusts. As a reminder, as of now, in 2026, the estate tax exclusion will return to approximately $5.6 million, which is $6 million adjusted for inflation. On November 26, 2019, the Treasury Department and the Internal Revenue Service issued final, final regulations under IR-2019-189 confirming that individuals who take advantage of the increased gift tax exclusion or portability amounts in effect from 2018 to 2025 
will not be adversely impacted when this tax law changes change sunsets on January 2026. If you have a large estate, this is something to discuss, so please call us. Qualified charitable distributions are still a strategy for retirement savers. As part of the SECURE Act, required minimum distributions, or RMDs, were changed to start at age 72 instead of 70 and a half. Qualified Charitable Distributions, or QCDs, are tax law provision that allows retirement savers over age 70 and a half to directly distribute up to $100,000 to eligible charities straight from their retirement accounts and not, take, not pay tax on the distribution. One idea that experts suggest is if you are charitably inclined, consider using part or all your required minimum distribution, or RMD, for a qualified charitable distribution. If you meet the qualifications to utilize this strategy, the funds must come out of your IRA by December 31st, 2022. They must also go directly to an approved charity. Like many of the other strategies we are discussing today, this, one, this is one that needs to be done properly, so please see us or your tax professional about this strategy. Now let's review the recent tax law proposal released in March of 2022. The Biden administration released the fiscal year 2023 budget and the general explanations of the administration's fiscal year 2023 revenue proposal, which is commonly referred to as the Green Book. The Green Book summarizes the administration's tax proposals contained in the budget. Please note that passing legislation takes time and even if any legislation is passed, retroactive tax increases are very rare and unusual, and it is very unlikely that they will take effect for 2022. Here are three of the proposals that were suggested. For those of you who are business owners and pay corporate taxes, the Biden administration has proposed to increase the corporate income tax by 7%, bringing it up to 28%. It is also proposed to impose a billionaire minimum tax, which they define as a 20% minimum tax on individuals who have more than $100 million in assets. They would like the taxpayer subject to this new minimum tax to make two calculations, their normal tax liability under our current realization system and the minimum tax under the proposal. Taxes would be paid on the greater of the two. The Green Book also proposed to restrict the deferral of gains for like kind exchanges under Section 1031, which is very popular with real estate investment holdings. Please remember, a proactive approach to your tax planning instead of a reactive approach could produce better results. If you need assistance reviewing any of these items prior to year end, please call us and we'd be happy to help you. In summary, here are some of the items that you should review prior to year end for tax time. What is your anticipated tax bracket? Will you take standard or itemized deductions for timing purposes? Capital gain and loss harvesting, retirement planning contributions, education planning opportunities, charitable gifting planning, and estate tax planning opportunities. It's also helpful to think about tax planning for any major financial or life events next year or in the future, as well as tax planning for any other personal situational concerns. One of our goals is to continue to help others. Some of our best clients were referred to us by existing clients. So please feel comfortable letting us know the names of anyone who you feel could benefit from our services or information. We would be happy to add them to our mailing list. Again, one of our primary goals is to keep clients informed, and we appreciate you watching our update. Please call us if you have any questions. Thank you for your time today. Remember, your health and well-being is our highest priority. Our goal is to help you, and we appreciate the opportunity to assist you with your financial needs. Please call our office whenever you need.